Hey guys, it's Audrey Steeman, and in this video, I'm going to be talking through some very basic After Effects tips, whether you're a very beginner animator or an editor or just someone who is very brand new to After Effects and doesn't want to learn the entire interface all at once, this video is for you. So let's get into it. Timeline shortcuts. For timeline shortcuts, there's a couple that are pretty easy to remember. T for opacity or transparency, P for position, R for rotation, and S for scale. And if you want to see multiple properties, you can just hold down shift and click on any of the keybinds for those properties. And let's say that you have a bunch of keyframes and a bunch of different properties. If you want to see just your keyframes, click on the layer and press U. And something else that's super useful too, if you want to adjust your timeline and adjust the length or certain parts of an animation, if you press the B key, that'll start your time frame. And if you press N, that'll end your time frame. Easy ease and speed graph. So for the easy ease and speed graph, I pretty much use this with about anything that I animate. So let's say that I just put a couple position keyframes here and I'm just moving this down and I'm going to add the easy ease. And then if I go to the speed graph and go to edit speed graph down below, you can see it's just a very basic ease. But what you want to do is kind of just manipulate some of those Bezier curves and kind of exaggerate the motion a little bit. Just simple tweaks like this can really elevate your animations. Setting your anchor points. So this one's very important and a lot of times overlooked, but, but most of the time your animations will depend on where your anchor points are set. So to move your anchor point, you want to press Y, and then if you kind of want to have it auto snap to the center or one of the corners or the sides, you hold down Control or Command. Or if you want to have your anchor point centered without clicking and dragging, you can do Control alt home on PC or Command-Option-Home on Mac. Layering effects. So this one's kind of tricky and this kind of takes some time to get used to as you start adding more effects to your animations, but the layering in the effects panel is very, very crucial to how your animation will, will look if you're doing a lot of effects. You kind of want to think of it in an opposite direction. So instead of layers going from top down, you kind of want to think about it from the bottom up. So anything that's starting at the bottom is going to affect everything going up and anything that's on top is going to kind of be on its own, if that makes sense viewing quality. So this is a pretty obvious one, but it can really trip people up sometimes when they're animating and thinking that their design or their animation is really blurry for some reason. Um, all you need to do uh, to check for the viewing quality is this little panel here um, kind of in your viewport and you want to make sure that it's on full if you want to see what the final animation or what the final look is supposed to look like. Duplicating pre-comps. Now this one is super, super important and a lot of people don't think about when they're first entering into After Effects because why why would you? <laughs> but when you have a pre-comp that is used in different compositions, you wanna make sure to remember that if you're changing anything in a certain pre-comp, it's going to affect that same pre-comp in any other composition. So what you wanna do, if you wanna have a similar pre-comp with let's say like the same type that I have here, but you wanna change the color of the type or the background in another pre-composition to use for something different, you wanna make a duplicate duplicate of that pre-comp so then you can edit whatever you need to and then name it properly. And this is where organization comes into play on this left panel here in organizing your pre-comps and making sure you know which one goes where. Double clicking effects. So this one's super simple as well. If you click on a layer that you want to add an effect to, you can either click and drag that effect onto the layer or you can just double click it and adjust all your settings from there. Track mats. So track mats are super, super important, especially with the recent update that After Effects has done with making track mats much more efficient in your layers. So let's say, for example, I want to add a pattern over this text layer that I have. I'm going to go to my track map panel that I have here and make sure click on toggle selections or modes uh, if you don't see that. And then what I'm going to do is I can click down on the drop down menu and I can select the text layer to be that mat or I can use the quick whip. And this is where I can also mess with the blending modes too. So if I want to make the pattern set to multiply and I can see the, the yellow background, I can do that. Or if I want to have the green also, I can toggle the visibility on the text layer itself too. So you can have both if you want. Color picking. So this is something that I'm surprised that After Effects hasn't streamlined as much as they have with other Adobe programs, but typically within After Effects and color picking, you can either pick from your pre-comp and anything that you can kind of see, or you can go into the hex code and type in your own custom hex code. But something I found really helpful with my time of like motion designing is creating a totally separate panel, and then you can just color pick straight from your 
from your libraries or swatches panel. So you always have your colors visible and no matter if you're making a new solid or a new shape and you're trying to get a specific color, you have all your swatches there on the left. Rendering on alpha channels. So this one's super important, especially for you video editors that need to use lower thirds or graphics that need to be kind of on a transparent background and use over video and stuff like that. So what you want to make sure first is that there's no solid layer background um, toggled on or, or in your layers. And then you go to file, export, add to render queue. Then you'll make sure it's at quick time. Go to format options. Then under the drop down, you're going to go to Apple ProRes 4444. Click OK and then you'll go to channels, RGB, and alpha. So it gets your graphic and it gets the alpha channel. And then click okay, and then send it where it needs to go, and that should be it. Thank you guys again for watching, and please feel free to like and subscribe if you find this stuff helpful, and I will see you next time.